I'd love to get your quick take on the most significant challenges and achievements for Andrade in Q2. Harry, so look, we've had a great year. It's been a transformational year. On the achievement side, the company has really shone out brightly. Um, so we've increased our mineral resource. We've increased the expansion of our production at our operating facilities. We've completed the construction of our lithium processing facility. We've added a tantalum processing facility to our existing plant. We've embarked on a strategic process to identify a partner to come along and join us on our lithium journey. We've also raised 41 million from financing partners, and that all sets us up for a remarkable year and what we believe will be the genesis of a transformational year for the company. Challenges, there's always challenges in mining. It's never easy, but as a miner, all I can do is manage my costs and my capex and my opex costs, but the biggest challenge is always the market. Up and down volatility in the markets, macro factors playing a havoc with our long-term plans, but we manage those and we just got to produce cheaper than the next guy, basically. Could we walk through the mining assets you have in Namibia, perhaps why each one is unique or special amongst the global mining industry? So we believe that the geology in Namibia is quite spectacular. It's very much underexplored. It used to be mined intermittently, historically, and the assets that we've got focus around the historical mining assets, the biggest of which was the old Wies tin mine that is now turning into the Wies lithium mine, Spodumin Hill, which is 10 kilometers away from our existing operations. And we've just completed a drilling program on that, which has produced some great results. Lithium Ridge, which has really produced spectacular results. That is, that looks like that will be a potential production facility in the, in the future. And then Brandberg West, which we are about to commence our exploration drilling program on was once also a historical mining asset. So these are all the key assets that have set up a footprint in what we believe will become a, a globally significant geological region for the green transition metals. You recently reported drilling results for both uh, Spodumin Hill and Lithium Ridge in Namibia. Uh, can you share more on those findings? These findings confirm our belief that this is a globally significant region. It shows the extension of our mineralization. Spodumin Hill showed some great grades uh, that were open-ended at depth, and this is only 10 kilometers away from our existing operations. And Lithium Ridge is turning out to be an absolute cracker of a deposit six kilometer long ridge uh, of lithium mineralization and something that we believe we can bring into production in a very short space of time. What can we respect in regards to exploration operations in the near future? We're rapidly expanding our exploration across the region and across our license areas. We've commenced a drilling program within our existing mining license area to expand the resource. We're looking to do resource drilling at both uh, Spodumin Hill and at Lithium Ridge. And we're looking to commence a drilling program at Brunberg West, which is also a very exciting future target for us. On the operational side, are there specific innovations or technologies that Andrada is leveraging or planning to leverage to enhance operational efficiency? So historically, the technology was a little bit dated, but we are using newer technology and that has pr improved the efficiencies. We use a dense media separating plant, which isn't in itself a revolutionary technology, but we are also looking at other technologies like ore sorting. So X-ray transmission ore sorting and near infrared ore sorting. Uh, these are technologies that we believe will become very widespread in the industry going forward. And we are trialing those on our plant at the moment. So just my own understanding, what is infrared and X-ray sorting? So basically X-ray transmission runs all the rocks over like an X-ray camera, like you would normally have when you go to the rheologist or what have you. And then it's got these air compressors and it shoots the rocks, the waste rocks that don't have minerals in it. And it's actually a phenomenal technology. So it basically sorts all the rocks before it goes into the processing plant and it upgrades the level of confidence and the grades going into a concentrating plant. So it is a really great technology and it's starting to be used across the industry quite a lot now. What were the main objectives of embarking on a strategic process to identify a partner for developing lithium and how would you say the process is going? So the process is going very well. We've had an, a lot of interest from a number of different parties. The main objective is to expose ourselves to the entire vertical integration of the lithium value chain. 
while we want to stick to our knitting, which is mining and processing of ore, we do believe that as the green transition moves forward, you're going to see a lot of vertical integration, not only from the mining side, but also from the end user side. And we want to make sure that we get exposure to that and also understand the technologies that are available to us to further downstream process our ore. And having a partner within the lithium industry will allow us the opportunity to get that exposure. When will Andrada produce lithium commercially? With our existing facility, while it is really just supposed to be used as a testing facility, we can run uh, revenue campaigns. We have had expressions of interest from off-takers. We could start producing almost as early as next month. Lithium prices have seen a decline since last November and have shown some recovery this year. What's driving these shifts? The whole lithium market and the whole lithium hypothesis is based upon electric vehicles. We've seen electric vehicles have a massive uptake in, in China. We've seen a, a big push for electric vehicles in Europe and, and North America. What has happened is obviously given global macroeconomic circumstances, the need for new vehicles has dropped off somewhat. Uh, but we do see that as the push for the green transition uh, progresses, you're going to see a massive uptake uh, once again in demand for uh, electric vehicles. And as a result, uh, lithium ion batteries and uh, lithium at, at, at the nuts and bolts of it. Lithium is a hot topic now, but what do you see happening with tin and tantalum? When will Andrada produce tantalum commercially? We've already run some commercial campaigns. The recoveries are looking pretty good. We're very confident that what we'll, once we've optimized the plant on the tantalum, that we'll, we'll have some commercial grade. Uh, on the tin side, tin is a, a very versatile mineral and is going to be crucial for the energy transition. It's used in all of your electronic circuit boards. So there's, there's always going to be a strong demand for tin. And once again, as your consumer demand picks up and as your uh, macroeconomic factors turn positive, you're going to see the demand for tin and tantalum increase uh, dramatically once again. And we'll be well placed because we are uh, going to be producing both of those and lithium at the same time. The recent mission to the OTCQB exchange in the US, what drove Andrade's decision to venture into the US market? We want to expose what a phenomenal asset that we have to the global markets. We believe that there's a lot more liquidity in the US markets. And I think that as the green transition takes place, the need to have exposure to global assets will become more profound. I think that the U US market is ripe uh, for the retail uptake of global assets. Small cap companies often witness significant volatility in their share price. What factors contribute to these frequent shifts? There are a number of factors. I think in the junior mining space, uh, you do see some juniors that don't fulfill their promises, which is uh, very unlike us, uh, where we've delivered on everything that we've said to date. But I, I do also believe that illiquidity in the capital markets is always a problem. And investing needs to become sexy again, and mining needs to become sexy again. So I do see that a whole new generation needs to be exposed to the need for mining and sustainable mining and needs to invest in uh, projects of the future. What is the company's approach to managing its FX and commodity risk? Luckily, the, the tin is traded on the London Metals Exchange. So we do have uh, the ability to hedge prices at, at, at certain levels. So it is something we consider. On the FX side, we are also exposed to the fluctuations in the Namibian dollar to the US dollar. So that's something that we do also look to manage. But at the essence of it, uh, we don't want to get too involved in the financial uh, markets and stick to our knitting once again, which is digging holes and selling dirt. How fundamental is M&A in this space? And what impact does this typically have on the share price? M&A is, is always going to be critical in the mining space. Economies of scale are something that, that miners benefit from greatly. It's something that you're always going to consider, but for our focus at this stage of our journey, it's all about building and developing new mines. And in the mining space, what sort of assets are particularly sought after and what stage of development are they? There's a number of different elements to look at. The one is obviously geography. The most important of all is geology. And then in terms of speed, in terms of what you can get into production. So uh, those are the three critical elements that we look at. 
And then the fourth one is in terms of how you scale from one asset into a, a number of different assets. As I said earlier, economies of scale are critical in the mining business. Uh, you want to drop your unit costs as low as possible and produce as much as possible, basically. What can investors and stakeholders anticipate from Indrada in the second half of the financial year? In the second half, we are about to uh, finish commissioning our, our lithium plant. We're going to produce our first commercial sales of, of lithium. We're looking to com complete our strategic process. We're continuing our exploration on our other licenses that are very really exciting at this stage. And it's all about growth and expansion of the company, increasing efficiencies in the plant. So it's going to be a fantastic second quarter to the year, and hopefully the world markets follow suit with us. With regards to the technology of the mining industry, how are technology such as ore sorting affecting the industry? We think that ore sorting is going to have a huge impact on the mining industry going forward. As people look for more specialized minerals and lower grade deposits, the ability to separate lower grade from high grade upfront before it goes into the concentrating circuit is going to be critical for the development of the, these new uh, technology metals. So we are looking very closely at X-ray transmission and near infrared ore sorting. So two technologies that I think will revolutionize the way we mine and will have huge benefits as we grow and expand our operations. Anthony, thank you so much for your time and telling us a little bit about how Andrade is getting on. It's great to be on here. It's great to be exposing what we're doing to a new generation of investors. And we believe that the future for Andrade Mining is fantastic. We've got a lot of upside for the company and we're very excited to be enjoying this journey. Mm -hmm.